Rebor is a company that produces prehistoric models, mainly of dinosaurs. Their detail and paintwork are generally really good. Now, one thing I like is what they call oddities, bizarre and rather outré presentations that perhaps appeal only to some specialized tastes. As a bibliophile fascinated by the Victorian age, the upcoming extinction is something I might get if I can afford it. My interesting experience with Rebor is that I only liked a few, but a few I like, I really like. For example, I got this woodland stegosaurus, but I like the plain and mountain version so much, I would have at least bought one of them if I'd had the funds. Now, so too is the case with their Smilodon Populator, released earlier this year. They released a snow leopard version called Ice Age, and a more stereotypically coloured one, the plain. They would later announce a jaguar, called the Jungle, and a Year of the Tiger special, which I knew I definitely wanted. This tiger variant is what I want to show you first. The tiger is an animal revered in Chinese culture, and this is the year of the tiger, so it's fitting to have a tiger stripe variant. I also like that with this, you have a personification of that popular, though inaccurate term, saber tooth tiger. So let's look at the model itself. Now this model is actually much bigger than I expected. I would even say humongous. It measures 25 centimeters or 9.8 inches long and 13.5 centimeters or 5.3 inches tall at the withers. Now, using an estimate of 2.3 meters or 7.5 feet long and 1.2 meters or 4 feet tall at the withers, this model is roughly 1 to 9 scale. However, I wanted to point out that the scale might not feel accurate for some of you because of the muscle bulk, which changes the silhouette from the leaner representations you may be used to. For context, these are the only other Smilodons I own. Indeed, this is one thing I own that I can honestly say I feel is too big, and sadly it's the only thing I own for which I can say that. As for the colour, it screams tiger for sure with that characteristic pattern. The darker orange segues into the lighter white undersides, which is a scheme you'll see in Extent Tigers. The stripes I feel aren't overdone. I'll just give you the once over for a look at the design and the paint application. Now let's talk about the model itself. The highlight is of course the head with these oversized canines, and here is a cool thing which I hope to see more of. We get not just one, but two interchangeable heads. Now this is an idea that's been around for the longest time since the Revoltex and also Hot Toys, and I'm happy to see that in a prehistoric model. This gives you two options with more realism by avoiding the ugly seam lines that come with an articulated jaw. And what's even better, in a mammal with shaggy fur, the joint here is barely discernible, and it also makes it less cumbersome to review. So first we have this one with the mouth closed and those defining saber teeth sticking out. Rebor has chosen to really highlight this impressive weapon here, making it longer than I've seen. But it's not a big problem for me, since as far as I know, no study has defined an upper limit. I'm far more taken up by the way these are not just sculpted, but coloured, with a kind of translucency that just reminds you of enamel, very realistic. There's a yellowing here that makes these look like lived-in teeth, and not some picture-perfect model. And so too for these other teeth. The eyes are really nicely painted. And fortunately, not cross-eyed. 
which would severely diminish the awesomeness of this predator. The head can look a little too big, and this isn't helped by being one of the shaggiest Smilodons I've seen, further exaggerating the size of the head. Now this render from Reball without the fur shows the head size relative to the rest of the body, which looks okay to me, so perhaps I'm just imagining things. And then we have the one with the mouth open, which is where business gets serious. And also illustrates the wide gape it can achieve. Now this seems to flow more naturally in this angle here, as well as make the head look smaller, at least to me. And here in the face, you can really see how the fur flows with the curves and the scrunching up of the underlying musculature. You can almost visualize the different muscle groups that contribute to a facial expression. The fur form almost collective cliques over these muscle groups and fall about the animal very naturally. The eyes are again very nicely painted. Inside, you'll see a glossy coating for the gums and tongue, looking wet and real. As for the rest, this is generally a very muscular, bulky cat, with some stylization, though not to the point of caricature. I think of it as an athletic, extremely well-fed, natural bodybuilder Smilodon as opposed to the steroid bodybuilder that you see in this Pepo Brachiosaurus. The bulky musculature makes the neck appear shorter than typical, and that impression probably is helped by this incredibly bulky trapezius muscle here, almost like a hump. Now, since my knowledge of mammalian anatomy is less than my modest knowledge of dinosaurs, I'll just split the difference between inter-individual variation and artistic license and leave it at that. Detail-wise, there are no shortcuts taken here. Now a thought on the posture. Past reconstructions suggest large animals were likely plantigrade due to weight, which would give you a sloping profile like this. In recent years, as argued by Mauricio Anton, which I'll link to below, extinct cats are thought to be digitigrade, effectively lengthening the hind limb and bringing the spine up a little like this. In this model, which looks correctly digitigrade to me, there appears to be a slope, but the hip joint seems to sit correctly with respect to the shoulder joint. So I think it's the head tilt plus this large trapezius muscle here that creates the slope look here. Now let me show you the other one I got, the snow leopard, or the ice age variant. 
this was in the first wave and I really wanted it, but I delayed for the longest time deciding if I should get the normal Smilodon color as well. In fact, I delayed for so long that my contact ran out of stock. And later, when the Tiger pre-order opened up, so did a second wave of the Ice Age, and I ordered them both. Now apart from what the Tiger means to me, this is still my favourite. I've always loved the Snow Leopard's coloration. There's something beautiful, pure and noble in spirit about it. Not to mention, I have something for blue eyes, and these little gems sitting in a face like that is just irresistible to me. I just look at that colour. The sculpts are of course the same, so I only need give you a once over to show you the colour, which some of you will already be familiar with if you got this during the first wave. Now besides the obvious, the teeth are a whiter, more idealised colour, but still with a realistic enamel-like translucency. Now I get that this white goes better with the colour scheme, the way that the stained yellow goes with this colour scheme. So just for the artistry, I'm happy with both. Aesthetically, I find just nothing to complain about. Now just like the Stegosaurus, Rebor has done splendidly with its paint schemes, and it was so hard to choose with four variants. Again, my respect to them. Each is a winner in its own way. The Snow Leopard was a no-brainer, but the rest was so hard to eliminate until the Year of the Tiger special came along. Actually, Rebor released images of a fifth variant, this Battle Cat. Now I don't know if they ever did release it, but I think you can see from the size that it would have made the perfect update to this old battle cat. Not to mention the Pentor. I'm really pleased to have decided on these two, and also I just realized that having these two uh, gives me a tabletop representation of this. Now the science part of this review, and of course we have to talk about those teeth. The cat family is called Felidae, and early in the Miocene gave rise to two different lineages. One was the subfamily Felinae, the conical toothed cats that we know of today. The other was the saber-toothed cats, the Machairodontinae. Now up till the late Pliocene, the saber-toothed cats were the dominant large forms. Of immediate interest when these cats were discovered was of course how to use these teeth. The word Machairodont meaning knife tooth already suggests the most obvious explanation, like a downward stabbing knife. However, arguments against this quickly arose, not least of which 1. The point was not sharp enough for stabbing, and 2. The risk of damage to the teeth themselves, especially for initial attacks. Arkeston in 1985 proposed the canine shear bite model. First, with jaws fully agape, the cat would bite at a convex surface like the belly. 
note that at this point, the jaw reductor muscles would be too overstretched to create any useful closing force. Then, using the mandible as an anchor for support, the neck muscles would flex powerfully, pulling the whole skull down about the mastoid into the victim. Now, this motion would create the initial penetration. The jaws start to close until the adductor muscles have enough mechanical advantage to finish the bite. And finally, a backwards pull of the head may have caused further damage as well as tear off a chunk of flesh. Now, others modify that theory, suggesting a bite to the neck to have better effectiveness than the broad curve of the belly. Not only did this narrower curve afford a better grip, the occlusion or even severance of the windpipe and carotid vessels would cause faster death and reduce the risk of damaging the teeth. An interesting question is how much contact there was between the tooth and the gums. For example, here is the root of a smilodon tooth. Does the gum cover only till here, the alveolar crest and a small part of the root? Or does it cover to the cemento enamel junction? Revere and Wheeler in 2005 examined Smilodon sabers with a light and scanning electron microscope, as well as spectral analysis. They found this to be more likely. That means three things. First, Smilodon was limited to how deep it could sink its teeth. And second, the tooth was secured more stably. And third, because gums are sensory, it warns the Smilodon of excessive stresses to the tooth and when maximum penetration has been reached. Now all this helps to protect these teeth and still allow them to be used for stabbing, but with limits. And yet another issue is how the sabers would change the appearance from the cats we know today. For example, how would it get food into the mouth? Miller 1969, for example, suggested that a saber tooth would need to have an elongated lip line further than that of extent cats in order to get food into the side of the mouth. In addition, the external nose would also be shorter with retracted nostrils and the ear set lower to give it a sufficiently wide gape. The result is something like this. However, others like Turner and Anton in 1997 suggest this would be unnecessary and Sabertooth could have a normal cat-like mouth and still use its carnassial teeth at the side of the mouth without problems. Thus, they suggest a cat-like reconstruction would be appropriate, respecting, of course, different underlying skeletal structures. For example, while Smilodon looks like this, Homotherium has a straighter profile and an elongated, tall and square muzzle. Alright, so much for the science. Now just a quick comparison to the other Smilodons I have, and it's not a lot. Here is the Safari Limited. With this cute little baby. And then the Collecte. To sum up, I'm glad to have these two, one for its absolute beauty and the other as a manifestation of that once loved term, saber-toothed tiger. They also reflect two cats I've always been fascinated by, the snow leopard and the tiger. They are a little stylized and muscled up with some inaccuracies, which I'm happy to overlook, and I consider these as stylized representatives of an awesome animal, pieces of art with a great sculpt and a beautiful paint job. I understand that Rebor might be making other prehistoric mammals, and I'll follow their career with great interest. Alright, so I'll see you guys soon with another video. Do share in the comments below if you have this model and which variant you have.